So welcome everyone to tonight's meeting of the Youth Advisory Board for December uh, 9th, 2021. We're holding a virtual meeting uh, per the governor's orders. Um, also our We Hope um, Coalition meeting. Um, if we can just go around, we have some new faces on screen and just introduce ourselves. I'll um, start off and then I'll kind of call on people to introduce themselves. And I'll have our um, two new folks kind of um, introduce themselves towards the end so they can kind of see who's in the space here right now. Um, so I'm Erica Texera. I'm the Assistant Director of Social Youth and Senior Services for the town. I'm the Youth Advisory uh, Board Liaison. And I'm gonna pass it on over to Kathy Bagley. Hi everybody, I'm Kathy Bagley. I'm the Director of Social and Youth Services and Parks and Recreation here in Weathersfield. All right, Patrick, can you go next? Hi everybody, I'm Patrick Talman, the Youth Development Manager and also the Director of the Eleanor Buckwolf Nature Center. Thank you. Allison, can you go next? I am the prevention coordinator for the social and youth services department, and I um, am directly working with We Hope. Thank you. Um, Colleen, can I have you go next? Hi, I'm Colleen Keen. I'm a parent in town and also have a child care here in town. Eileen, can I have you go next? Sure. Hi, everyone. I am also a parent in town. I have two daughters, and one of them is a junior at the high school now. The other graduated this past year. And I work at Connecticut Center for Advanced Technologies and also sit on the Career Advisory Board and a couple of other workforce-type advisory boards in the area. Thank you. <laughs> can I have you go next? Did you say me? Yes, please. Hi, I'm David Zagaya. I'm a resident of uh, Weathersfield. I have one, uh, my baby's still in high school. The two others have graduated and they are in college now. I'm a state's attorney in Hartford and I've been on the board for a few years. Uh, I admittedly have been absent for a few months and uh, hopefully I'm back now on a regular basis. Things have been busy. We understand, Dave, we missed you. Thank you. Colleen's doing Christmas uh, decorations, we can see. <laughs> Um, I'm doing, I'm doing all on, on screen I'm here. Doing, okay? <laughs> it's called multitasking day. She, she is, she is. Yeah. <laughs> Barbara, can I have you go next? Sure. My name is Barbara Bellis. I'm a parent of two seniors at Weathersfield High. She's and crazy. I also work at Weathersfield High as the secretary to the principal. And um, Sarah, can I have you go next? Hi, I'm Sarah Briggs, and I'm the teen librarian at the Weathersfield Library. Bonnie, can I have you go next? Everybody, I'm Bonnie Smith. I'm a parent of three in town, but also the contracted evaluation consultant for Weathersfield Drug Free Communities Grant. Thank you. Alyssa, can I have you go next? Hi everyone, my name is Alyssa. I work with Bonnie and we do the evaluation for the Drug-Free Communities Grant. Thank you. Um, so now I'm gonna, I think I got all, all of our uh, regulars. So I'm gonna introduce um, two new people that are on. Um, Mallory, can I have you go first? Sure. Hi everyone, I'm Mallory. I am a resident of Weathersfield, and I actually am a program coordinator for Ellington, and I was invited by Allison to come to the meeting today, and um, yeah, I'm happy to be here, and my, my husband grew up in Weathersfield, um, he's, and uh, we just moved here um, in July, so happy to be here. Great. Welcome. Thank you. That's very exciting. We love to have new community members. Um, and next, I'd like to introduce um, Mary Pelletier. Many of you might know Mary is um, a town council um, member, um, and she is our new liaison for the Youth Advisory Board. 
Um, so um, we just want to give a big welcome to you, Mary, for joining. And I would love for you to take the opportunity to introduce yourself and share, share whatever you would like with the group. Thank you. I'm really happy to be the new liaison to the Youth Advisory Board. Um, I have two sons, a ninth grader and a fifth grader in town. And um, this is my second term on the town council taking over for Tyler. And um, I'm looking forward to uh, being part of the group. So thank you. Welcome. I had the, uh, the wonderful opportunity to speak with um, Mary earlier today and kind of filled her in on some of the great stuff we've been doing and a little bit about our group. So she has a little bit of background, um, which I'm sure could be a little helpful coming into a group that, that's this, this large. Um, so we got the um, introductions over. So I have, um, I took um, attendance um, while doing so. Did I miss anybody that I didn't call on? Great. Um, well, we cannot do the minutes, um, approval of the minutes right now, but we can go um, right if, oh, we actually um, didn't actually call the meeting officially to order if we wanna do that right at the moment. I was waiting till we had a quorum, but um, I'll call that to order at 7.14 tonight. Um, does anybody, um, Patrick, would you like to start with youth service report? Sure. We are winding down a kind of chaotic start to the school year with the after school programs. They're pretty much in the last week is next week, except for basic baking, which is going to run one more week because they had a half day last week and we didn't run it that way. Other than that, they are all ending next week and they'll be restarting up again in January. I've been over at the middle school pretty much every day. We've had a program running and just kind of wandering in and checking on things and meeting new teachers in addition to the ones that we've just had. So I'm getting a lot of feedback in terms of what we can start for new programs. And people are catching me in the hall and suggesting that they can do this and that and the other thing. And I said, we've only got so many spots and so many kids. So we did add a few things for the uh, for the winter and spring. We do have model, model rocketry, my brain's off today. Robotics coming up in the for the winter and spring. And then, a creative writing is going to be going on in the spring too, or fall, winter. What are we? It's not. I don't know. Winter, spring, summer. I can't remember. Winter. So we have those two new things coming in in the winter, and we also found a new teacher who's going to take over the baking class. So we're actually gaining programs. Still waiting for the principal to give me a heads up on whether we can do more highly active activities in the gym because we'd like to have like a basketball day, a volleyball day, indoor soccer day or something along those lines. But we haven't heard back yet. So right now it's still just going to be generic. Kids pick the activity when they get there kind of thing. And I'm hopefully that'll come really soon because our brochure is about ready to go out and start registering. So I need to know that within the next couple of days before we can make any changes. So that's basically what we're waiting on right now. All right, thank you. Kathy, did you wanna share anything um, for um, Parks and Rec? No, I think um, Patrick mentioned how we're, we're winding up the fall session where we were able to offer programs and now we're looking uh, to go into the winter <coughs> and spring for next year. So, um, so all that's going good. And we had staff that were involved with holidays on Maine. So I don't know if any of you were able to attend but we had a lot of people and a great turnout. So that was kind of fun to see, particularly since mostly everything was outdoors. So that was good. So that's kind of what's happening with uh, on the park and rec side. Thank you. I just wanna, um, we got a caller that that's calling in 860-502-2706. Uh, Can you just let us know who that is? <clears throat> Erica, you might have to unmute them. Oh, okay. See if you have that in your screen. I think they have to unmute themselves. I can ask them to unmute. I thought it may be Eric, but it's not his cell phone. So that's he not may his cell phone. No, but he could be calling from his work. I don't know if he's got a police phone. I don't know. 
Yeah, it doesn't look like I can unmute them. Okay. And ask them to unmute, which I did, but I can't. Unmute. Yeah, no, that's all you could do. Okay. Oh, there we go. Can you hear me oh. now? Yes. It's Maria. How are oh, you all? Oh, hi, Maria. <laughs> For some reason, my Zoom is not working, and this is the way I can, the only way I could think of getting in. in the oh, no problem. So we have so that's why I'm late is literally I couldn't try different ways. The Zoom was just not working for me. <laughs> no so, problem. Perfect. Thank you. We did introductions already. So I'm just going to let everyone know Maria Alfonso, um, one of our youth advisory board members, is on um, the phone. Thank you. Welcome, Maria. Hi, y'all. All right. So um, it was looking to see if we wanted, if we had anything from the schools or any um, parents that wanted to share any updates, as well as um, the library wanted to share any youth updates program wise that they wanted to, um, that they were um, offering or would like to share. Sure, I can I can go. Um, so we're still moving forward with our plan to resume in person programming. Um, in January, and we're hoping to kick things off with um, a welcome back party with just some crafts and games and snacks and things like that um, for the teens on that half day of school, January 5th. Um, just to kind of, you know, welcome everyone back to in-person programming. Uh, we are still limiting um, in-person events to 12 people. Um, so for the teens, we'll do our welcome back party and then um, the next week we're going to try and um, get our anime club running again um and after that we will have a um we'll have a paint day um we're, we're actually bringing someone in to take them step by step through making a painting kind of like the paint and sip but obviously without you know the sipping the um like what you do with like paint bars that kind of thing um and um we're still going to continue doing a take and make because those have been pretty popular and there will still occasionally be uh, virtual programs when it makes sense. Like we are doing a winter holiday trivia in, at the end of December, and that's going to be, that's gonna be on Zoom. So I'm looking forward to it, hoping that um, we get some kiddos coming back in and we do see a small amount after school, but not, you know, not the usual crowd. So hoping to offer a little bit of everything, get people back in. Thank you, Sarah. Um, any parents or school members that want to share anything? This is Barbara. I don't have much other than I'm sure there's a couple of you on the call that have more detail, but the survey uh, was given to the students at Weathersfield High this past Monday. And as far as I know, there was one, one student that didn't, that the parent opted out. So that's, very good. Thank you for bringing that up. Actually, we can go right into if Bonnie um, has anything that sh you would share about um, the, I know you don't have any of the data, but yeah, anyway. no, I, well, I do, but I can't tell you about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, Alyssa will walk you through a loose response rate, but I just wanted to thank you, Barbara, for telling us that about how many, um, parents opted out because sometimes we don't actually hear that. So if anyone is curious about the specific numbers for the middle school, we had 506 responses out of 568. And for the high school, we had 1,046 out of 1,146. So collectively between the two groups, that's about a 90.5% response rate. The data haven't been cleaned yet, so some of those will probably drop out and the number will go down a little bit, but the high 80s is fantastic, especially during this COVID time. So I think it's very successful. It might be our highest response rate in recent times, actually, go Weathersfield. Um, and Allison prepared a wonderful video, and I'm sure that's the contributing factor for this great response rate. I bet you it was as well. Um, I, I doubt it. 
Are you showing that tonight, Allison? Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> You're sure? I mean, think about it. You might want to. My, my, I just have mushroom hair the whole time and I just watch <laughs> it and I cringe. So it's fun. I thought it came out. I thought it, it came out very well, but th think about it. You might want to. I Put the it. in the chat, maybe. I'll, I'll figure it out. <laughs> um, so if we don't have any other um, items to share on kind of youth service side, I can just share a couple from social um, and youth services. Um, our Thanksgiving program was a huge success. So we were able to accommodate, um, I believe it was um, close, I think it was over 150 households for the, the Thanksgiving meal program. Um, I have to get the final count because we had some last minutes um, that weren't accounted for. We actually had a, a quite a number of last minute ones, but um, so that was a huge success. So the, all the drives and everyone that, who donated, I just want to say a huge thank you because I know a lot of members of this group um, were part of that. Um, the first responders drive was huge success, which allowed us to pack a lot of bags. And then we were able to give out gift cards for turkeys, um, which seemed to go over very well. <laughs> um, and then we already talked a little bit about the survey and juvenile review board, we're, um, we're trickling in new referrals. Um, we're meeting in person now. We actually had um, an in-person meeting this afternoon. Um, so um, all good stuff. Looks like um, uh, we're definitely um, able to accommodate and meet with families as needed um, and, in, and quickly. Um, so we're just gonna, we're trying to really keep up with case management and helping families make referrals to like the appropriate, especially when it comes to like mental health, behavioral health services that are out there, given that there are some wait lists and um, just some, you know, uh, some, some bumps in the road for trying to get people connected to services. So we're really trying to help the families navigate that. Um, and then we're just right now in our busy season with um, our holiday gift program for the youth um, that will happen next week on Thursday, the 16th at the community center. And um, we're looking forward to um, getting a lot of youth um, gifts for the holidays and um, their parents are gonna be able to come in person and pick out those gifts and um, some, some other goodies that'll go along with it. Um, so we're really excited to get back into that um, in person and we're gonna be spreading out in the, in the banquet room and <clears throat> all that good stuff. Um, and then just energy assistance season is in full swing. So we definitely are um, busy, very busy with that. And then all of our food programs are still going on. Um, anybody have any questions? I have one. Hi. I finally figured it out on my husband's phone. What can I say? <laughs> we can see you, Maria. Yes. So I'm not a ghost. I'm just using my <laughs> husband's phone, which seems to like Zoom better. Uh, quick question. You mentioned the first thank you for everything that you all do. Oh, especially this welcome. time of year, but all time of year. Um, it's great for the residents in town. Um, question. You. you mentioned the juvenile review board. I had yes. I had suggested uh, Cindy Clancy might be interested in that. So I was wondering if that came up. If yeah, I passed along our information to our case manager okay. who um, is going to connect her with our first um, um, new case that comes on. We had follow-ups all this month. So I know we were trying to do um, our first involved in like the first new case that comes on. So she's on from the beginning. Awesome. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? No, we're good. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other updates at the moment to share with the group. I think, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I will turn it over to Allison to kind of take over the second half of the meeting um, on our drug free, um, our drug free communities grant and the work that we're doing there. Um, and then we can over any, you know, questions or any comments anybody wants to share. Are you good, Allison? Oh yeah. Before we head into that area, can we just quickly talk about the campership? Um, what's your thoughts about me calling Fort Vallarta again and doing the fundraiser? 
Oh, good question. I was going to save that to the end, but we can go, we can get that out of the way too. No, no, you're good. Um, I'd say that's a go. Let's, let's do it. That was a pretty easy peasy fundraiser and it, it definitely uh, raised a good amount of money. So if the okay. whole is in favor. Um, I'm going to be bringing up fundraising and stuff in shortly. Yeah. We, but are we fundraising for the same things? Um, it's all going to be conjoined in the same bubble. Okay. Because I'm willing to do the uh, wooden tap thing again, if you want to do that. Uh, I know things are different, but if we kind of shoot for maybe April, May, and fingers crossed, maybe we can get something off the, off the uh, ground. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. I know last year in February, Sarah was part of us doing um, the virtual 5K. So that's another option as well. Yep. Will we do an actual 5K or does it have to be virtual? I don't think it has to be virtual this year. Um, I think we did it virtually because of COVID last year. Um, and just to make it easier for people to, to sign up. Oh, it also another appeal of virtual was we didn't have to do the logistics of like mapping out a route and having like water stations or um, hiring security or first aid or anything like that. So instead we had everyone just sign a waiver when they registered saying like, I understand, you know, if I do this on my own, the, you know, potential risks involved or whatnot. So um, in that sense, it was all profit, even though we charged less because it was virtual, but there's no reason why it has to be virtual. It's very expensive to get police though, if you don't have it virtually. Mm. That's, that's the big cost. You, you can't go through any major intersections. Okay. I wonder if I, we could do like walk around, I don't know, like a, the high school track or something like that um, to kind of maybe circumvent some of the um, traffic and safety concerns. There's something to think about. It was fun. <laughs> I did mine indoors because it was February. <laughs> no, I think that's all good ideas. Um, I just I... K like last few days ago. What was that? Oh. I said I ran 5K a few days ago. <laughs> Impressive. Um, <laughs> wow. We can um, go into um, kind of Allison's portion and if that kind of hits on some of that. The only other thing that I want to mention um, before we go right into that is we do have three vacancies on the board. Um, so we have two youth spots. And then um, now that Janice uh, De Roberts is on Board of Ed, we have that opening. So I just want to put that out there um, so that we can look to get those positions filled. And you're a co-host, Allison, so you can take it whenever you want. You guys is, can I, how do you, like that? All right, so <clears throat> do we want an icebreaker or do we want to watch the video? That's my question. Video, 100%. Video. Video. Okay, well, Video. I hope you enjoy my favorite offspring animal combination real quick. <laughs> okay, let me. Me, me, me. A feline. Do you get it? Because it's cats. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> what? Meow. Yes, I get it. Why is this not? Um, Lord help me. I am so bad at this. All right, so I'm just going to copy this and then put it in here. That's what we're doing. Okay, are you guys ready? Coffee burns 46 pounds in two weeks. 
If you're over 25 and struggling with weight, you Wow, Hi. I'm really subpar. I'm sorry. I'm trying. There we go. Hi, my name is Allison Nidu, and I'm the new prevention coordinator for the town of Wethersfield. I work in the social and youth services department and I'm here with John Martin, 2020 Teacher of the Year, to tell you about the Youth Voices Count survey you are about to take. This survey is not just another test. This information helps the town, school, and other organizations plan programs to support youth and families just like you. And the survey will ask you a bunch of questions about your perceptions and experiences around a variety of topics like youth substance use, mental health, online gaming, and social media. This survey is completely anonymous. No information can be traced back to you, and no IP addresses are collected. An outside company will collect and report on the data. No one will know how you respond to your questions. The survey should take just about 10 to 20 minutes to complete, so when you're done, please sit quietly while other students finish. If the survey brings up uncomfortable feelings, please seek help from your school counselor, school psychologist, school social worker, nurse, or teacher. If you find you need help after school hours, please call 211 or go to 211ct.org and they will direct you to the best resource for you. Remember, this is important and anonymous and it might even be fun. These questions are all about you and your perspectives on issues that impact you and your peers today. Just like the title says, this is your opportunity to have your voice heard because you voices, voices count. count. That was great. Super brave that you shared that, Allison. Thank you. <laughs> Very well, good. I mean, the entire uh, school saw it, so. <laughs> All right. So um, the icebreaker I was going to do would be if you were to mix two animals, your favorite animals, what the name of the offspring would be. Kind of got a little play on words and cat and sea lions, so I made sea lions like bee lions anyone got it yeah okay <laughs> so we hope i want to start every time we get into this part of the coalition meeting kind of pulling us back and talking and re reciting our mission and vision statement so that we know exactly what we're doing and we stay goal oriented so our mission is to be a community coalition dedicated to engaging and mobilizing youth parents and community partners to reduce youth alcohol and drug use and to create a safe and healthy community. And our vision is to create a safe, healthy and thriving community free of underage drinking and drug use. So we're getting right into the fundraising kind of concept. I am looking to start the new year and our next meeting, getting subcommittees figured out and creating smaller groups so that we can have people that are um, proactive in those different categories. So the three subcommittees that I was thinking about pulling together and wanted to get some um, feedback from you guys is youth programming. So that would be focused on the youth oriented um, part of the coalition where we're looking at setting up leadership um, meetings, different kinds of activities for them to do, events that we can make for them so that when we do these monthly meetings, which I just had before this, we can start instilling more than just those meetings. Like there's more to it. We can give them interview skills. We can give them how to build a resume, things like that to start helping them build up their set of tools for them to get the most that they can out of being a part of, we hope. So that is what the youth programming is looking at. And also I think that's a great way for us to use our networking and different aspects within the community and the people that we know, because I may not know the best person that is focused in leadership building, or maybe someone at the school is like focused on helping students build resume and interview, and they could come in and talk to the kids one-on-one -on -one and that kind of thing. So I think that's a great place to really work on networking. And then community outreach. So this is less focused on the youth, but this would be focused on events that we can get involved in, ways to get our name out there, um, and also like some social media content, that kind of stuff. 
but that would also tie into fundraisers and campaigns. So that would be the logistics side of the fundraisers. So if we were to do something like the 5K, it would be the background and the putting all of those things together and doing kind of like the legwork to make it possible. This is when people can chime in and give me their thoughts and kind of what they think of that. Yeah, I, I like the idea of how you broke it out. I, I tend to hate fundraising. I always get stuck with it. Um, I, I would see myself helping out with the programming probably. The youth programming side of it? Mm -hmm. Awesome. And you being in the high school would make like that would be perfect. Mm -hmm. So what I'm thinking of doing is sending out maybe like a um, like a doodle poll or some kind of like polling question where you can like put your name in and where you'd be interested in doing. And then we'll kind of go from there and see where bodies fall. And if we need to combine like community outreach and like fundraising, then we can kind of find a way to split things up appropriately. And then the campaigning can kind of go with the youth programming because I feel like um, a lot of the campaigns is going to be very youth oriented in terms of like the social media posts and like having the youth play a huge role in it as well. So if we don't have enough bodies, like we can work it out that way but i want to make sure that we go into january and starting 2023 with like kind of hitting the ground running and being able to really start using this platform that we have to actually like make a, a solid difference not saying that we weren't doing that before it's just more organized in that fashion all right um next what Allison will probably um, somehow fit in once we get the data from the survey. We'll fit that in somewhere to kind of dive deep into some of that data and see like. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Perfect. Absolutely. Um, I figured that's why I'm, I was waiting more towards like January or February to really start things up in planning so that mm -hmm. we have that time to get that data back. And also like, if we're gonna be doing community outreach, this could be like parent meetings where we're telling them about what we found and what's going on with their youth and like how to really use that data properly in connecting with our community. So the next question that I wanted to ask regarding subcommittees was, would people be more interested in a meeting like this um, and extending it a little bit past eight o'clock and doing breakout subcommittee sessions that way within the Zoom, we'll make out small breakout sessions where you can meet with your group and kind of start going over things then. Or would you like to pick, like I could run different meeting times where those specific subcommittees could come together and meet virtually and like talk about things and do logistics that way. I just wanted to know where people's heads were out. I would send out an email like a little bit later on with how we're gonna go about doing that after we do the doodle poll, but I wanted to get an idea of where people were at with that. My initial um, reaction would be the same night. I'm, I'm not looking okay. for yep. more evenings. Okay. Me too. Yeah, plus we're already yeah. here, so. Yep. Yeah, I agree with that. I think um, same here, Allison. We could keep our our like you know the formal meeting very short and in the beginning, and then use the rest of the time to kind of just break off and focus on those those tasks. If that if that makes sense, because I agree, I don't want to make anybody feel like they have to take more evenings out of their schedule. Okay, that's why I wanted to pose that question. Um, and I think the format that I would be looking at is we'd come together all as a unit in the beginning, kind of go over the overarching things, main themes, that kind of stuff. And then we would break out to our subcommittees and kind of get right into the meat and potatoes and then come back together for about five minutes at the end to just like, if we have any questions, that kind of thing, tie everything together. I'll be sending out an email after the meeting to kind of wrap up everything as well. Um, 
campaign of focus that Eric and I had talked about a few days ago, or like the direction that we might want to go into, um, just from like some anecdotal information that we've heard through the grapevine is marijuana, because right now we're, um, there has been a, um, like a public health alert in Connecticut that fentanyl is being, um, put in marijuana. And they're seeing a lot of ODs off of kids and people smoking marijuana that they're getting off of, um, like knock off off the black market and ODing on what they believe is marijuana. And also, um, it's much easier for youth to smoke marijuana because of vapes and all the edibles and different ways of doing it. So our first step would possibly be a marijuana campaign. And there was actually youth overdose, right, at, at a high school in two of them, Connecticut, two of them, yeah, mm -hmm. with vape cartridges. And they actually, good thing the schools had Narcan available because the kids were Narcan and were able to be saved because it was wow. um, cartridges had fentanyl in them. Yeah. And they're selling cartridges called Fenty carts. So it's, it's a cart that has fentanyl in it and the kids know it has fentanyl in it. And apparently, I've been doing a lot of a lot of like digging into this. Kids are getting their marijuana off of Snapchat. Hmm. So that's a that's a whole thing. Um, this is this is wonderful. Hold on, let me. Are you guys seeing this? The link I clicked on. Yes. Uh, yeah. okay. um, Allison or Erica, it's Bonnie. Do our schools have Narcan? They, was just oh, yeah, they do. They do. I think, yeah, they. Um, I know at least the high school does. Um, and that was, I think, that was in light of some edibles that were taken at the. I think it's at the middle school and high school because of the issue, the incident that occurred with edibles being taken at the the middle school. They it gave them the opportunity to put Narcan, but I believe only SROs and nurses are able to administer them. Really? What if what if teachers were Narcan trained across the board? That has been a conversation about getting other folks in the building trained. I don't know if, if he, I, I don't know the logistics that if they were trained on their own, if they're able to administer at a school. I'm not sure, Bonnie, I don't know if you have an answer to that. Um, but we have talked about getting more people trained at schools um, and having more kits available in the building. I can see where there would be a lot of, unfortunately, challenges allowing, because I, I don't even know if a teacher can administer an EpiPen. So I think of it as sort of the same thing, although less invasive. I don't think they uh, administer an EpiPen, so it's probably the same thing. And I'm sure it runs with their union and everything else, so. Yeah, that's the other point. One is, can you do it legally in terms of who can administer? And secondly, is that's a subject for labor relations because that's the change in working conditions. When I worked in school, we had, you know, it was voluntary, but there would be training offered. Uh, it wasn't Narcan, it was CPR and operating the defibrillator. Um, and that was offered usually twice a year. And I mean, some teachers had to, like the PE teachers had to be certified and keep their certification current, but the rest of us had that option. And there were a fair amount of people in the building who si signed up to do it voluntarily. And then everybody got added to a list. So we would know who on the first floor was certified and who on the second floor was certified. Um, I don't know if you volunteer, then maybe it doesn't have to be, um, a union issue? Uh, you, no, that's not how that works. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a labor person. You don't get to volunteer for things that have that kind of impact across the board. You, you may, but the union will eventually find out. The other thing separate from that is I don't know what the liability is. All right. Thank you. I'm guys. not going to be Debbie Downer on this. It's just, <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> There's definitely a lot of like logistics behind it mm -hmm. and um, absolutely liability and all the things, but that was a good question, Bonnie. I think you initially asked it, but I just wanted to put this on your radar. Um, so this is a Connecticut uh, campaign called you think, you know, and it is um, 
focused on counterfeit pills, marijuana, um, basically looking at all the things that are sold over the counter or um, sold, my goodness, sold in the black market. And it gives statistics as well as it shows the difference between um, counterfeit pills and also it provides resources. So once we get our website up and running, I'm definitely going to be putting this out as a resource. Um, so the drugs on social media thing, they have a lot of like informational videos. I'll send this link in as well. That's talking about how Snapchat and Instagram have been used, um, to buy, um, drugs. And then it also talks about recently how someone got a pill that they thought was just a single pill of Xanax, but it was pressed with fentanyl and ended up overdosing off of one pill. So, um, it's just really speaking to the crisis that we are currently in and it does has parental um, information. I just thought this was a really good resource and a good way to introduce um, kind of the campaign direction with fentanyl that word or like marijuana and fentanyl and all of that, a good way to introduce that campaign and why we're looking to do that. All righty, let me exit out of this. Are we back to looking at the PowerPoint? The PowerPoint's up. Cool. Okay. Sorry, guys. I'm trying. <laughs> All right. So the group photos that we were talking about, there's been some back and forth conversation between me and Scout Collectives who are doing our website and the people who did the logo. And so this is what has come to be. They have asked us to get a headshot of all of our members that are involved in the coalition to be put on our website. With that being said, some of you may obviously opt out of this, but if you're okay with it, it would be greatly appreciated. Um, and so after having a conversation with Troy, he said that for us to do the headshots, they need to look similar and um, to try and not have them be like everyone's in a different setting or it's from a different time, that kind of thing. So I am, was trying to think of the most um, convenient way for everyone to get a headshot so that I'm not um, bombarding your schedules or making it kind of difficult for you to come and do that. So what I did is I made a sign up Google sheet, which I will be sending out to all of you. And this is what it looks like. I set it into 15 minute chunks. And what I'm asking is you guys come, take the Google sheet, sign up for a time slot, and then come to town hall during that time slot. And I will take your headshot in front of a ring light with a nice camera in front of a blank background. And we will get consistent headshots across the board to fulfill this website requirement. So I put in the um, the dates, the times, and then you just enter your name in the time slot right next to it. So like if you were going to come on Monday, all you would do is put your name right there and I would know to meet you um, to for that appointment time and we'll just take your photo. And it's that it's that easy. Hopefully you guys think it's that's that is the best way I could think of doing it instead of trying to get you all at one time in one space. So that I was trying to be flexible with your schedules. Does anyone see that this would be a difficulty for them? Oh, it'll work. And you get a free yeah. headshot out of it. Yeah, it works. Cool beans. I, I'm, I got a ring light, the whole thing. It's going to be really fancy. Allison, this is Maria. Uh, I think it's wonderful. Uh, I'm in South Carolina, so I'll pass. <laughs> <'Cause> That's <laughs> okay. It's not a problem. I'm we, can, we can do it after you get back, too. And yeah. one of that point is we can always update the website and add. I'm just saying that so you know where to focus your energy right now because I'm two days away from you, give or take. But well, it's I'm glad that idea. works and I'm going to send out that link to everyone in the email, the follow-up email that I sent you either tonight or tomorrow. And then I want, also want to share with you the splash page that's finally up. Um, and so this is what it looks like right now. I have business cards with our QR code to this website. So this is all that is available right now. So once we get the final pictures and everything and finishing that content up there, um, they will see something different. But I thought this was 
exciting. It's like kind of coming to fruition, like step by step. So. Allison, it's Bonnie. Um, yes. So we can see your PowerPoint, but when you open links, we can't see those. So you guys couldn't see the website that I was showing you at all? No, I think you might just be sharing your PowerPoint. I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> not not to worry. Here, this is well, what we'll we want to see the website. <laughs> Can you see my whole screen now? I'm just showing my whole screen now. So this is what the website looks like. Wonderful. And then um, did you see the Google Doc that opened or no? Wow, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and so this is the Google Doc. So you can see all of the dates. And so you're just gonna put your name in like this. And then that will be um, your time slot. So you can see that I just like set up the days, the times. And if this doesn't work with you, reach out to me directly and then I can find a time. This is just the time chunks that I know that I will absolutely be available and made myself available. All right, and so then this is we hope. I'm gonna go back really quick just so that I can open up the you think you know. So this, so you open into it and it immediately tells you um, the public health alert, which I thought was really great. And then you go onto it and it can gives you the resources, where kids get the drugs, what drugs they use, drugs on social media, treatment and support resources. And they also give you a lot of um, data and research which is great. So, and this is a Connecticut initiative. All righty. So the next part of this, we need member testimonials. So um, the minimum we need is four. And so this can be any one of our members. And we want, because we are a new coalition, the approach we are going to take from this is going to be focused on the purpose of our work or like the reason you're a part of the coalition and why you want to volunteer, not necessarily the impact that we've made because we are new. So like why you want to do the work or um, the purpose of it, what your vision is, what the vision and mission is. So I need like if you could or would be willing to send me a testimonial, please do so. Um, I'm going to send out that email, like I was saying, and then if you could respond back to me, if you're interested in doing that, that would be greatly appreciated. We need at least four. All righty. Any questions on that? Any more? Does anyone need like further clarification? All right. So unfortunately, um, the way the world works and the lovely pandemic that we are dealing with and all of the above. I made this flyer for our holidays on main event. And I just wanted to share it with you guys because I think it is a flyer that we may use in the future. Um, we took some content from the website that we have been um, building and I kind of made it into a visually pleasing quick little flyer that gives a small introduction to who we are, what we do. I implemented the vision and mission statement in there to try and make sure that we stuck with how we are trying to identify ourselves. And then also I thought that it was a great way to show parents and families the approach that we are taking on substance use prevention. So looking at it from a mental health aspect and also finding coping skills so that we are doing harm reduction and um, giving them the preventative factors and building that up as well. So any thoughts on that? Feel free to chime in if you would like any commentary. If you like it, dislike it. All right, I'll keep cruising through then. So this is exciting stuff. Um, we have t-shirts. I'm actually wearing one, please hold. So they're great, super nice. So this is the t-shirt. It says we hope on the front and then on the back, it's the big hand. And it's like an indigo color, it's really nice. Um, I actually gave them to the five youth that came this evening. And so I'm very excited to see them wearing them. I 
very upfront was like, do you guys actually think you will wear this publicly? <laughs> and three of them were like, yeah, no, these are really cool. I was like, yes, that's a win in my book. We got three out of the five. So um, there's the t-shirt and then there's the long sleeve. So that's really great. And then we got some swag items. Unfortunately, we were not able to, like I said, again, do the holiday on main event. So I do have a lot of these items um, that we are going to be using for future events. So I made a, or we made a to-go cup. It's like a coffee, um, like tumbler, I guess you can say. Um, I figured that we can give these to parents, to members, because we are avid coffee drinkers. The average person drinks a cup of coffee a day. That is a statistic I just made up. So don't quote me on that. And then we have a stress ball, a stress star, and then a pop socket. Um, I got a really good review from Erin Clark actually this evening, and she's very excited about the pop socket. And then a lanyard. I thought the lanyard was really good for the high school students and for high school and middle school teachers because they have to wear their badges um, when they're in the school. So if we could get those out in the high school and the middle school, I think that would be a great way to get our logo and our brand out. So I was thinking that if we were to do table events at like um, sporting games and just hand them out, that would be a really good way to just get them to the masses. And then that is the end of my show. I did want to touch briefly on, I'll stop sharing. Hold on. How do I stop this? Oh, it literally says stop share. Sorry, guys. Um, so I do want to touch briefly on, I talked to the youth this evening um, about, well, I talked to one specifically who hung around a little bit after and spoke with me. He's actually one of our JRB cases. And I was like, after JRB, do you have any intention of staying on with the coalition? And he looked at me and was like, no, not at all. And so I was like, okay, why? And he's like, it's boring. And I was like, oh, okay, that's fine. Um, can you tell me why you think it's boring or like what approach we should take? And he was like, it feels kind of like school. And so I think with that feedback, um, we did watch the Demi Lamato documentary. Half of them were super involved. And then there were a few stragglers. Um, but I think that the youth programming subcommittee, I'm going to need like I'm hoping to work very closely with that subcommittee and get a really good team together so that I can take that concept of it feeling kind of school oriented because I did want to put in some substance use education in there as well and make it become more active learning and find a way to implement those um, like leadership skills and those different kinds of events so that we are making it more exciting for them, because I do want to create a program that makes it so we get enough involvement and it's has enough personality so that it's sustainable long term and that once this grant ends, it doesn't disappear with the money. So that's my spiel tonight, guys. And when you come for your headshots, you'll get shirts and swag. So that's exciting. Another reason to come get headshots done. I love the swag. Thank you. Incentive items, you know. Do you want people to wear certain certain tops for their headshots? So on the um, sign up sheet that I'll be sending you, I wrote, don't wear anything with a logo. Um, don't wear anything with like a very intense design. You want to be kind of neutral um, with regards to what's like aesthetically pleasing. Um, and I mean, you're all going to look beautiful. So it's, it's great. I'm excited. Thank you. That was great. I have two questions. Absolutely. Um, and I'm sure this has been said in the past, but just bring us back. Um, we all started as youth advisory board members. Mm -hmm. Does that automatically make us We Hope members? Um, we are using the youth advisory board as our coalition as, our, as our, our sector, a lot of members did sign sector representation to be on, on the coalition, um, but we kind of, they're, they're two different, but we're using them as kind of one because their, their missions, their goals are, the, are similar. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? 
Yeah, I, I'm not speaking necessarily for myself. I'm happy to be a part of We Hope. I just want to make sure that <coughs> people in general understand, like you, you don't necessarily have to be on one of Allison's three committees, but you can still continue on youth advisory. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. And then okay. certain members here and others signed um, sector agreements. Not that that like that's like a binding. Like they're they're fluid. I, those can change too. But they signed to be part of the the We Hope coalition representing a certain sector in the community. Okay. So essentially, when we um, did the grant proposal, part of the grant and the framework that we're building our coalition off of, you need to have certain rep representation um, from different parts of the community so that you can get the funding and so that that it makes sense yeah yeah so essentially um because this organization obviously as erica was saying has those members um and a lot of the things like the work that you've been doing the fundraising um the programming and the middle school like after school programming all of that kind of stuff ties into the concept of what the coalition and the work that the coalition is trying to do so the goal was to take the like-minded people in this group and find a way to intertwine the coalition so that we can continue getting this funding and also still fulfill the requirements for the youth advisory board, the local prevention council and that end of things as well. Regarding the subcommittees, anything is honestly voluntary. Like if you have no interest in being in a subcommittee, that is perfectly fine. And I totally understand. Um, I'm just hoping that with the the goals that we have and the mission that we have and the work that we want to get done it will require um some more formal uh breaking down of the larger group so that we can really get those things done yep. okay that's great i i appreciate that clarification and then my second question is related to the fundraising itself you talked about it would all be in a bubble just explain um how the money will be divided Um, we're, I think we're looking at fundraising to kind of continue with, if we want to do our, yeah, our Yabbit scholarship, kind of the, 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 the core of what we were doing with our youth advisory board, mm -hmm. um, the Yabbit scholarship. And I know that this group really likes to donate to the campership fund. So those mm -hmm. two are still on the forefront. Um, we are pretty much going to be using grant funded money to run any of our prevention programs. Um, so that's not really what we're fundraising for, but it does show nicely that we're fundraising to have certain programs like a campership fund, which in, in, in all honesty is a prevention program to get kids active and involved in the community, as well as our volunteer recognition and giving a scholarship at that event. So it does show nicely as part of um, the grant. But those would still be <laughs> our our two main focuses on um, using those those funds to go towards unless the group would like to do something different with that and then by all means we can vote on that. Mm -hmm. I think um, more so with the fundraising aspect of things, um, getting our name out there and getting um, coalition recognition is like the main goal with that, like, well, obviously the main goal is to raise funds and have it for the youth advisory board, but more so like we're just going to be like representing our coalition while doing the fundraising where the money's going to be going, like Erica said to the, yeah. Thank you. Any other questions from anyone, concerns, anything? Allison, I had to step away at part of the time when you were talking about the subcommittee. So when you send out what you're sending out following up, is there going to be a description? And also for any of the people that aren't on the phone or aren't on the yep. call tonight? Okay. Yep. I'm going to be sending quite a detailed email, um, making sure okay. that like, um, like I give you the instructions of next steps, what's expected, that kind of thing in terms of just like right. headshots, testimonials, that kind of stuff so that everyone's on the same page. I'm always available um, for an email. Like if you have any questions, I have no problem. And I honestly, um, I would I will answer typically like whenever I get an email. So um, Thank you. 
it's not a problem. I really don't mind answering those questions. And if anyone has any kind of like concerns or needs like resources or help from our end, like I'm always available. Thank you. Thank you. So that kind of wraps up my piece of things. I think um, we can, you know, obviously see if the group has any anything else they want to share. But um, I don't foresee us having to go much past um, right now. I know that we don't have a technically a formal meeting on the youth advisory board um, end of it because of the quorum. So um, we weren't able to do like voting on the minutes or make any um, have any formal votes, but um, I think it was a very productive meeting and I appreciate everything that you shared, Allison. And we look forward to the long email that's coming <laughs> that'll help us like digest all of this and have something to refer back to. I have one more really quick question before we get off. Did anyone get a chance to watch that TED talk I sent you guys? It's okay if you didn't. I know Kathy, you did. I was just wondering, it was really, it was a really good video. So if you have a chance. Yeah, all right. yeah it definitely was a good video. It, it's, um... It really makes you think. Awesome. I did not, but will. It's it's a good, it's it's a good in terms of it really speaks to um, the power of each person and their individuality and what they bring to a group and also like kind of like the benefit of social capital and that kind of stuff. So. I really, um, I enjoyed it. I'm, I'm a TED nerd. I, I do love getting deep into like random TED talks all the time. So when yep. I find good ones, be ready for me to send them over with some inspirational quote, cause that's like my jam. <laughs> but that's fine. I led TED talks too. Awesome. <laughs> Any good? So I'm sorry, did we decide that I should call Puerto Vallarta? I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. I think um, that's a good idea to go for because I know that they book out pretty far in yeah. advance. Um, yes. So I don't yes. see the harm in doing that by any means. Okay, I'll call yes. the next one. Okay. Yes, and sir, I, thank you. And I'd suggest on our next meeting, we can start talking about the spring and maybe getting something going for the mm -hmm. spring. Yeah. Outside so, sounds like a good idea. Yes. Yes, outside, definitely. And Colleen, just a heads up, I happen to hear a group did Puerto Vallarta about two months ago and made $2,000. Yeah, I think that was Weathersfield Hockey, no? I don't know, I can't keep up, but. Yeah, I'm not sure who, who it was, but yeah, I just heard they were talking about it and said, yeah, no work, all they had to do is get people to go out to eat. Exactly. Take out. Yeah. I forget how, I don't remember offhand how much we made last, was it last year or the year, probably the year before? I don't know. I've kind of lost track between yeah. 2019. You made up to close to a yep. thousand. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, I yeah. mean, it's easy money, like literally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'll call one um, tomorrow, if not early next week. Thank you. Awesome. Um, we good? Yeah. Does anybody want to call the meeting um, adjourned? I will. Second. <laughs> Who second that? Eileen. Eileen. Um, and it is 810, so we can conclude the meeting. But I do want to wish everyone a happy holiday um, and really enjoy some time with hopefully family and loved ones um, and close friends. And uh, just want to say thank you for everything, um, the dedication and the time for everyone in this group over the last year. And um, you know, really moving this group forward into like our next phases. Um, it's been, it's just been great working with everyone. So let's, let's keep it up. And I look forward to 2022. Thank you, Erica. Thank you all. Thank you, Thank you Erica Thank and you, everybody. Miss Erica. Happy Miss New Allison Year. And everybody. Bye. 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 Happy Thanks. holidays. Thank you. Bye. We can all get Bye. boosted now. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of holidays and being prepared.